Major funding for this program is made possible by grants from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, Kilroy Architectural Windows, Inc., New York's Window Company, New York Community Bank, Capital One Bank, Greenberg Traurig, LLP. Additional funding is provided by grants from Briarwood Organization, Beechwood Organization, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Friedman, LLP, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Jack Jaffa and Associates, Real Estate Consultants, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Markham LLP, Marcus and Millichap, Margolin Weiner and Evans LLP, M&T Bank, Meridian Capital Group, The Moynian Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Orphanides and Associates, SJP Properties, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, Urban American, The Wickoff Group. Hello, my name is Michael Stoller. New York City has such interesting and unique characters or individuals or whatever you really want to say. But you know, in New York City, there people love eating at restaurants and there are some great restaurants and there are people who have created the the concept of these restaurants, you know, Brooklyn Diner, Bon 45, Trattoria, Fiorello. Today I have a legendary restaurateur. Thank God he doesn't cook, but a wonderful guy by the name of Shelley Fireman, the chairman and CEO of the Fireman, Hospital Fireman Hospitality oh, Group. Thank the you for being here today. Red Eye Grill I, I, and Shelley. I mean, I, I didn't think, if we're going to talk about my whole, all my children. <laughs> uh, okay, all your children. So, all your children, you were born in the, the Bronx, I believe? I believe so. Okay. That, that's what my parents told me. Now, yes. now the, <laughs> you know, the interesting thing of being born in the Bronx, and I remember I was born in Brooklyn, and then I lived in the Gravesend neighborhood. There was the, El, the, the there was the train, the McDonald Avenue train for me, but you had the Jerome Avenue train. Yes, and I could touch it if I leaned out the window with my 35-inch arm or something. So you were able to also at that time, uh, it was very good. You never I knew. heard it and touched it. It was always, every 10, every 12 minutes, you heard the train. Every 12 minutes. Now, your dad, let him rest in peace, he said to me, was in the garment center. He yes. was a... Uh, marker, a marker, a grader, grader, and a cutter. And a cutter. And mom was a housewife. Wow. And when when you were going to public school, you, you, you know, you even went to work with your dad, right? In the garments. I worked on the cutting on table. The, on the cutting table, and you learned... Stretch. That's that, I, I only stretch. He wouldn't let me use that rotating blade. You could hurt yourself. <laughs> but he let you stretch the, uh, the schmatters. And cut, and and cut, cut individual it. samples, and which I still like today to use his cutting shears. Relaxes me. It's oh. very interesting what happens. <laughs> Is that how we cook? <laughs> no, 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 not no. But I'm... So you know when you're in high when you're in public school and high school, you know some people have you know you, you were in the garment center. <clears throat> you sold uh, magazines. I sold magazines, vacuum cleaners, advertising space, subscriptions, uh, and a bunch of other things. I'm sure. Now. now now this is you know, and then you go to the legendary D. Witt Clinton High School. It is legendary, it is. isn't it? There's so many graduates, and you know, people who were there, and later on in life, you meet somebody who's a D. Witt Clinton, and you sing D. Witt. Oh, don't I can't carry the. Okay, tour. I'm not going to do the, the carry. The. <laughs> now, the interesting thing, I know you're in good shape, but I didn't realize 
that you were a football player at Dewey Cliff. It's not so loud, the whole neighborhood will know, stop it. Yeah. So, it's sort of embarrassing now, when you, you think now, about now, it. Now, <laughs> to say, if you, if, didn't, they, if, you didn't have, if you didn't have a scholarship, now this is people gonna understand, right. if Shelley didn't have a scholarship, he wouldn't have got to Hartwood College. Which True. Was, now, which was probably one of the few times, because of the, the financial stress of mom and dad, that you ever got out of New York City, that you got to Oneont in New York. Well, slightly true. I also lived for a while during July and August in Hinsdale, Massachusetts. My aunts ran hotel anyway, so I did experience the world outside of uh, the Bronx sometimes. Far Rockaway, which was... The bungalows. Bungalow. <laughs> and Lock Shell Drake. But yes, Oneonta was... That really was, away. I mean, that was away Ooh. with the finger and legs cold. and cold. So, so now, you know, Hartwick was a couple of years, and then you come back, and you come back to the city, and you work in the garment center, you yes. told me. And you're selling advertising. To start, that's to right. To start. And what was the other? Then I published, I published a little magazine, which I don't want to go into. We won't get to the subject. And then I went... Then somebody offered me an opportunity to be a salesman in the garment center, selling dresses. Small size or big size? You know, oh. Petites? Well, I got to remember now, petites too, but juniors and no sizes 8 to 20, I think. Now, the interesting thing is Shelley Fireman knew that he didn't want to work in that thing. You wanted to own your own business, right? Right. And, you know, in the tradition of a nice Jewish guy, you knew that the best way to get your clothing clean was to bring your laundry back to, to, your, mother. to your mother in the Bronx. <laughs> Smart guys who were broke especially brought them back. So what, so what do you, but this is, this is how we get into the restaurant business. So this is the great story. So you, one day you're bringing up the, the clothing. In From the, Burnside Avenue where the Jerome Avenue L stopped up Jerome to 182. You bring the, the clothing there, and what do you see? An empty lot and a glass building, which I walk close, and I see a piece of machinery making and stirring and cooking bagels. Bagels? But they used to be in the basement by the pool room. And you used to buy them on Friday night. The guys Six used cents to a make piece. The guys used to make it with their shirts off, and it was, <laughs> and all of a sudden it was clean. It was, right, a, it was the water was coming out. Ooh, right? How did you touch them when you think about it? They were schmitzing all over those bagels. <laughs> so you see this, and I say, "There's something going to be. The bagel has a future. I'm serious, sure bagel." So I knew. That was in the program. The bagel has a future. What, where it's going, what it's going to do, I don't know. Except that day that I hung around with a couple of guys on McDougal Street picking up uh, girls or something, and uh, somebody said, let's open up a coffee shop. And I said, no, that's stupid. Let's make a bagel hip. Let's make the hip bagel. And how big was the hip bagel? The, the size, size of this uh, the chair that I'm in. <laughs> that's what people said. It, you know, but people wanted to go to the hip bagel. Because it was hip. Now, you didn't make the bagels. You got the bagels from the guy in the Bronx. But I made the Italian sausages because I went to an Italian sausage factory on House and Street back then, because I love Italian sausages, and I walked in there, and I said, if my mother would ever see this place, forget about it. I'm going to learn to make it myself. So I paid a guy $100 to teach me how to make. So I made my own Italian sausages. I made this. I made that. And my mom used to come down with her special Grandma Hipsteins jello from the Bronx in a tray every week because it had fruit, nuts, sure, don't ask what was in there. And 
we got free advertising from all the jazz stations. I mean, we were great, and everybody, yeah, jazz what, musician, what happened is, it was everybody up, came. You know, the people came, all the jazz people came there. Bob Dylan lived next door. They said, what kind of voice he has? Who, how's he ever going to be anything? Everybody. Lenny I, Bruce I, was there all the time. Wait, Alex Hale. Every, wait, there isn't a star in the world, dead or alive. Bill Cosby used to, everybody was now, there. But the interesting thing is Woody Allen loved it so much that in the movie Play It Against Sam, he he even he writes the story. He he no he he's appearing. He, he, he tells the story about the woman. He says, "I used to go into the hip bagel. I used to give this waitress an extra tip because I really wanted to be with her." Yeah. And I mean, this was you know it's in it, everything. Well, you, you, if you Google hip bagel, uh, hip bagel, they they have this over there. Yes, so, there we were having. We were children having a good time. <laughs> so then, from the hip bagel. You find this little artist, the, the legendary Peter Max, right? No, well, no, before that I, uh, I went to Paris to do a film. You know, I had that checkered childhood career here of exploring, the, what you're supposed to do at that age, right? When do you stop exploring? I'm still exploring, so I don't know. Explore, I always, we, we, we don't I, Let's always explore, that. but anyways. So in between, we, we try to be, you know, we try to do things, and... But then I had an opportunity to go uptown. Uptown was a big step from downtown. From McDougal, I mean, I know people from today. From Bleecker and Mook, McDougal. I know, I know grown ups today who are proud to say they never go above 14th Street. <laughs> so you went, you went to where, 51st Street? 51st Street. And you open up a The place Tin Lizzie and Peter Max, who was a friend and came on board and and helped me and did the most superb design job of, of the time. And the, how large was the Tin Lizzie size? Big. Oh, it was big. It was a real place with a 50-foot bar. I have to tell you, it was one of the great, on one of the worst streets at that time, because it was a truck street. Yeah, and it was also the, the time that the city was uh, in, in, as, the kaput, in, in the kaput, uh, the kaput. Uh, uh, <laughs> but now, you know, the, the kid from the Bronx, Jerome Avenue, moves in an apartment in the century. I mean, wait Central a Park. Wait a minute, we were brought up to strive. I mean, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm, not I, not a, I'm not a bad person. I, I didn't I, say, I didn't didn't say. So, 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 so you moved to the And it was great for the girls. I mean, I had a, wait a, I had a bachelor apartment with a terrace overlooking the park. <laughs> what could you want more? Well, now, so what happens, and that was not a good neighborhood, the Milstein family, Thank God for Paul Milstein and his generosity and his brother Seymour and the whole Milstein family, which is great to me. So the Milsteins are building, a, it's Lincoln Center, but it's, Lincoln Center was really 19, you know, in, in the 50s. It was built by the time. It was built. You know, no, it was, it was, no, it was, no, it was AFD, yeah, it was right, being but, built. But the neighborhood where you opened up was not a, really, it was across the street, but the new buildings weren't there. Nothing All, was, nothing was there. It was really a difficult neighborhood. The urban development, the Lincoln it Square. It was hard. Development. Even, you, so you found this store. What happened there? I, He's building this 45-story well, rental it, building. Well, I wanted the location because I felt I just did my numbers. Remember, I learned the restaurant business at the public library. So one thing I oh, I knew those numbers. Forget about the ideas. That's easy. But there is numbers involved. And... Uh, so I knew that that location would, was good today, at least to break even. The deli was, was the deli there at that Nothing. time? Nothing. There was one French bistro came in before me. He didn't succeed. There was nothing. Wait a minute. When I, there were, I don't even think there were two. There was one. Paul Milstein worked very hard. That Milstein family worked very hard to merchandise and develop that. So, so you Ooh. go with your business plan to Paul Milstein for a year. God bless Paul Milstein for one year because I don't blame him. He wanted a big company who could sign he real didn't want name, the, he didn't a want, real name. He, he didn't want the hip bagel or Tin Lizzie. He, he wanted, didn't want Shelly Fireman. He wanted restaurant associates. He wanted, he wanted, but. So what happens finally? His generosity and my being a pest and my marketing study, because I really did do a full-blown-out marketing 
study comparing my idea to every other concept so and so forth. So how does something from the bagel to the tin lizzie become Fiorello? Because my marketing study at the time against every restaurant concept in the country, French, Italian, Portuguese, so forth and so on, and the market said Italian would be the best thing for this location other than a McDonald's. I couldn't get a McDonald's franchise, so since Italian, I went back to the public library and I studied Italian food. As you know, today I have a home there. I've lived there for 20 years. I have a beautiful home, Tuscany, and uh, from the Bronx, you got to be flexible, so I think I'll so, plenty of Italian. So, so you opened up, and the name, you told me how... Fiorella's, I searched a year in my mind and walking and thinking, what can I call this place that everybody can pronounce that didn't sound like a funeral parlor somewhere back where I grew up? And then there was his picture. Fiorella's LaGuardia, everybody could pronounce and you it. Felt it was a Broadway show. Wait, and people, in addition, you know, he was half Jewish, so you know. I you yeah, well, that I always knew. That, yeah, okay. Every Jew has that. Oh, he's part. At least he, okay. he's part. He had a part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. That. Uh, <laughs> so, but you told me an interesting thing. Thank God, also besides Paul helping you out in the location. The electric company helped you out also, the right? The electric, shh, they can go after me. Is there interest on that debt? <laughs> you don't want to hear that story? No. Well, it's an interest. Cash flow is, yes, the electric company helped me out. They're, un, they're yes, their fallibility. Well, they're entitled. They, the meter you kept turning. You paid it back later? I bet. The meter kept turning after four or five months. I said, where's the bill? I, didn't, where's the, I looked at the meter. I said, well, I don't get a bill. Now, either you call them, or you know you're going to pay anyways, but let them call you. If there's bad news, let them go find you. So it took them about 13 months, and they came to me one day, and they said, you haven't paid the bill. I said, I have not gotten a bill. That's right. Give me the bill, I'll pay it, but I need another 10 months to pay it. But it was great cash flow. Oh, so then, less cash but, flow. But then you decide to go to the east side, 3rd Avenue. Yes. What happened? Fallibility. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, imperfect human being. Uh, and the subway that's never been built, the construction that was going on, the streets that were closed, and the fact that I forgot my rule, two meal periods a day, one to break even and one to earn a profit. And that's what the East Side fails. And the East Side gives you one meal a day and everything else, oh, oh. And they go away July and August to the Hamptons and their uh, avu and uh, the... So then you get really smart, right? Yes. You say, where can I get lunch, pre-theater, theater, after theater? You go, and you said, you know, look, you probably always, Carnegie Hall, you know. I remember once I sat on the stage because I was on the board of NYU Medical Center. When could I ever be on the stage at Carnegie Hall? So you're across the street from Carnegie Hall. Yes, because when I was 16, I used to come down from the Bronx for 50 cents. You could sit in a balcony on Sunday, listen to the most beautiful music or on girls galore. You want to... Pick up girls on a Sunday. You let's get the back balcony, to the balcony. Let's get back to the uh, Carnegie let's, Hall. Let's get back to the rest. So, so there, but I knew Carnegie. I knew the neighborhood, and so, I knew what. And the rent was enormous, which is a blessing sometimes because if you're given an, if because you've got those meal periods, and you're given a percentage rent so you could sleep and eat. I just knew what we would do, and we did. So the that's the Trotteria. Year, the Trotteria, and the Trotteria's got another 20, 30 years to go. It's been there. I made a 40-year deal. And um, and you opened that in 1989. Yep. And then the Trotteria's on, on 56, it's really between 56 and 57th right. Street, uh, in a landmark building, and next to it is 888 7th Avenue, which at one time had an OTB and a Chinese... We don't know. 
we, we're still trying to figure yeah, it out. We know there was an OTB. And there was a Chinese, but we don't know. I guess they sold figurines. They had giant space and a lot of terrain, terrains so, so, with so, blue and so white. So how, from another time, how did it become Red Eye Grill? Uh, I, mean, I, I like wanted to compete with those guys that own Trattoria, so I like a skits, you know, you have to compete, so I, I know, I obviously I'm not going to do Italian, so I, it was just reasonably sane to say all my guests fly every week or every other week to Hollywood on the red eye back and forth, so we'll take a combination of Italian food and, I mean, Italian, where I'm, no, no, I've got so many fish. Italian restaurants, I forgot, so we'll take California food and New York food, and we'll give them real food, and it'll compete with that Italian next door, who's me. And and then there was this little space on the other side of the property, which the landlord asked me to take, and I said, what am I gonna do with this? It's so tiny. <sighs> okay, I wanted to be a nice guy. They were very nice to me. So I said, okay, now what am I gonna build there? The Bronx Diner doesn't sound as good as the your Brooklyn hometown, Diner. right? So you open up this little Brooklyn Diner. Because the word Brooklyn makes everybody smile. Every, even every time you say it, you Bronx, I don't know, but Brooklyn. So you, you like that neighborhood. So later on in life, you, you, you go down, there's an automat. Yes. I mean, the, the I legendary... I wish it was an automat. Yes. It was, a, I don't know what, it was a few no, other no, it things. it was an right? automat, then it was the Motown Grill or whatever. Yeah, I knew, yes. Every, but I, we, you and I remember it as yes. an automat. we remember it. And the automat, you open up, and it was a two-level thing, three levels. Three, two. four, actually, the basement, one, two, three, four. It's a great place, and right. you open up Shelley's. Right. And that does great. Great. And you got even, you got even luckier because somebody bought you out of the lease. Absolutely. <clears throat> Then, Wait a minute, that's not bad to no, be lucky. No, no, no. Oh, I love so, it. So, what happened? Did you like clothing from Bonds? What, were you, Bond 45? I didn't, you know something? I struggled to find another Italian name that everybody could easily pronounce that I wanted. And but then you, I decided... Why did you go to Times Square? I, uh, mean. I went to Times Square because it was Times Square, and that was... I, I should have gone to Times Square and owned the property a long time ago. But Times Square was Times Square, and it was very little competition. I felt, and there I had this opportunity to build in this empty space as something that I could put some heart and soul and creativity, because as you know, we design almost all the spaces internally ourselves, and uh, you know, I'm a human garbage pail of design, and I never go to any country in the world without first stopping in the architect's bookstores and buying it. So everything. then you open up Bond 45. And open. there, uh, and it's an Italian steak and seafood house. and uh, Which is, my friend says to me, the best veal parmesan in the city of New York. And, it, and the cookies. Don't worry yeah, about no, the cookies. Yeah, no, and it, I don't know what the best is, but it's pretty damn good. It's pretty and good. so there we have it. And, and, then, and then you open up another Brooklyn Diner over there. Well, what am I going to do on a Thursday is the joke. Yes, so I hope, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, 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 wait. So, so some yeah. people, you know, they say, look, I got this restaurant. We'll forget about Some people the, are really smart. Yeah, they but, say, this restaurant, I'm going we're, home. We're, 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 we're not going to get out to, to, don't get, to yes. we're not going to Fortune of Country. We're, we're going to forget about that. We don't what? Know. That, that what? Was, what? Yeah. I don't even hear that. <laughs> but, but wait a second. I mean, you like being on Carnegie Hall. You like being, living near this. What do you know about Baltimore? It's not Baltimore. It's oh, on the Potomac. It's on the Potomac. I mean, you could you could uh, canoe on the Potomac. Could, so so uh, Shelley is now in the Potomac, right? Shelley is now on the Potomac with Bond 45, which I will say is because I'm the only steakhouse on the Potomac. That opened about the end of January, which right. I, which and you and I are going to take me down there I'm and go take, see yeah, that. And it's really, really successful, and it's nice being the only Now, you can open up another restaurant there, aren't you? The Red Eye Grill and a Fiorella's Pizzeria and Cafe, and we'll be the only pizzeria on the Potomac and the only Red Eye Grill. Uh, international, because it's an international community. People are in Washington and so forth. So now, speaking of international, ah, Dubai? Dubai. Wait, is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, I mean, w wait a second. The kid from the Bronx to go to Dubai? Remember, in America, you got to be flexible. I agree. So now the you're, you're opening up a Brooklyn diner in Dubai. In By August. 
I, we're going to be open. I don't believe it, but we're going to be open by August. And my partners there are from Bahrain, and they are very sweet, wonderful people. I've entertained them. And so I have a question. Why only a Brooklyn diner? I, I can understand well, that. Well, that. here's what we made the deal. Let's, let's get the Brooklyn diner open, let it be successful, because it's not easy to get licenses there with alcohol. We're next to the Intercontinental Hotel, so we're very fortunate. And most of our places require alcohol, and it's not easy. And our partners over there, uh, while they sell food to the hotels, because they're in the food manufacturing and supermarket business, those are not easy licenses to come by. So as soon as we get others, we'll build a steakhouse there, I'll build Bond there, I'll build the Red Eye Grill International there. So we're looking forward, and they have, my partners there have locations in India. And my son's old girlfriend now lives in India, so we're wired, Speaking we're you, wired. Okay, we gotta get, to, we got to, about two minutes left. You got, you're, you're married to Marilyn. Thank God. Thank God for Marilyn. Thank God, and thank God for, 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 for my for son, who doesn't cause me any. Uh, uh, your son, John, who now is the night manager in. Uh, As of next week, he's the day manager, I think. Wait a second, you're letting him work days? I don't. Know. <laughs> so, if so, he can get up, no, I don't know. <laughs> no, but <laughs> you, 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 see, you went to Hartwick for one year. He went to he went to Yale. He went to Yale. Well, we, that's I mean, progress. My father went to a Van der Childs, I think. <laughs> no, so so uh, and so and John's helped you out. I remember a number of years yes, ago. Yes, my son also has an MBA from Stern, Stern yeah. and he and he likes the film business too. He likes the he likes you. Yes, he's yeah. He likes just like his father. Like his father. Well, you remember? Well, I, I said like I know, <laughs> even though like his father. So, so now. You know, let's 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 look at this progression. I mean, y you know, from taking the, the subway to New York City, you know, to living in Italy, and you know, you don't like the Hamptons, as you said, okay? But you know, I like Italy. You like Italy. I like Italy. I don't dislike that. But, I like but, Italy. But you know something? When people come to New York from around the country, and people know, and they know about Shelley's, and they know about the Trattoria, and they all know about a Red Eye Grill, and everybody knows that the best part is the food is great, and you can always get a little cookie at the end. You know, there's always that cookie and all the rest. And I, all I can say is, uh, you are truly a unique builder of New York, and I'd like to thank you for being here today. Bless you, bless you, and thank you, I thank you. Major funding for this program is made possible by grants from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, Kilroy Architectural Windows, Inc., New York's Window Company, New York Community Bank, Capital One Bank, Greenberg Traurig, LLP. Additional funding is provided by grants from Briarwood Organization, Beechwood Organization, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Friedman, LLP, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Jack Jaffa and Associates, Real Estate Consultants, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Markham LLP, Marcus and Millichap, Margolin Weiner and Evans LLP, M&T Bank, Meridian Capital Group, The Moynian Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Orphanides and Associates, SJP Properties, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, Urban American, The Wickoff Group. <laughs>